Thank you, Chairman Graves and Ranking Member Napolitano. I appreciate you uh, holding this hearing and I uh, also want to thank all of our witnesses for being here today. Um, in Illinois, I represent the northwestern region of Illinois. Uh, we have a real problem. Our aging water infrastructure is inefficient and can even put public health at risk. On top of that, we know that our fix-as-fail approach to locks and dams puts our growers and manufacturers as well as the navigation industry in a guessing game of whether they'll be able to deliver to consumers on time. So simply unacceptable. When we invest in our water infrastructure, we create good paying jobs, protect our public health, and help get goods to market more efficiently. There's no reason we shouldn't work together to make, our, make sure our country's water infrastructure programs work for users and help address the massive backlog many of our communities face. Uh, so uh, uh, again, my district, Northwestern Illinois, live along the Mississippi River. Uh, the Illinois River runs through the southern part of my congressional district. So locks and dams are absolutely critical. Um, so when I think of the water infrastructure, certainly I also think of water lines and the Clean Water Act. Uh, but in my district, we also, as I said, think about navigation. Um, so for the panel, um, is anyone here prepared to discuss the navigation infrastructure on our rivers? Um, and just wondering if that is something that any of our panelists would, would care to address. And that can be addressed to any one of you. Anybody want to volunteer for that? <laughs> I, I would go ahead and just say that uh, I think as part of a broader infrastructure package that uh, inland navigation has to be a part of that. And we support efforts to try and take both the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund and Inland Waterways Trust Fund off budget so that the full amount of revenue that is paid in by users um, through excise taxes on barge fuel and through the goods that are moved through our ports can be put to good use constructing the kinds of projects and making sure that the number of days that locks and dams are out of service due to uh, maintenance and delays uh, goes down. Mr. Chair, Madam Bush, um, I'm just going to speak to one project that I'm familiar with in my role on the Great Lakes Commission, which is the replacement of the Sioux Locks, uh, which is a critical piece of infrastructure vital to the uh, uh, economy of the Great Lakes, our harbor of uh, Duluth and Superior in Minnesota, Wisconsin is a key piece of the national infrastructure, creates a vulnerability in our processing of goods and services across the Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Seaway, and that is one uh, critical project that the Great Lakes Commission has passed resolutions supporting and has spoken up clearly on. So that's in a different hat that I wear on a different day, and I'll be back next week uh, to, to, uh, on behalf of that organization. Anybody else have anything to add on that topic? All right, so uh, th this one I'll address Mr. Stein to you and then um, also Mayor McCarthy. Uh, you guys had mentioned the uh, state revolving uh, uh, funds in your testimony. Um, it's been really important to my congressional district in um, uh, the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund has been an invaluable resource um, in our area. We've got uh, including $11 million sewer improvement project that wrapped up last year in a town called Rock Island, Illinois. Um, also in a community uh, called Galesburg um, in, in uh, my congressional district, incredibly important to replace about 2,000 solid lead lines that are going to people's homes uh, from the water main. Um, and so very important. I'm wondering if you have thoughts about the demand for these revolving loans and whether the demand is outpacing what Congress provides annually in appropriations for the, that fund. Mr. Chair and Ms. Bustos, yes, the demand far outstrips the available funding. Uh, states uh, leverage those dollars through uh, their own resources. Uh, multiple different approaches applied across uh, various states. But the demand, uh, the need is somewhere in the area of uh, a couple hundred billion over the next five years just for drinking water systems alone, uh, probably 300 billion over the next 15 years in clean water and wastewater infrastructure. Uh, those, those funds are, uh, the appropriations through the revolving funds are a significant uh, source of revenue to states and local communities in meeting those needs. Mayor McCarthy. Thank you. Uh, it's really critical for a lot of uh, municipalities and also smaller levels of government where the revolving loan funds, uh, New York, you also have a set of expertise 
from that side where they're doing unique projects that are in water and wastewater so that they add a little bit of value to the community in the low interest and no interest loans are, uh, again, sometimes deal makers in terms of allowing communities to go ahead with the projects to meet the regulatory requirements that we're all uh, dealing with. So I would encourage members to look at funding those at levels that provide adequate resources for the local governments. All right, thank you, and I've used up my time. I uh, yield back. Thank you. Thank you. 